Hey you Sidechart users, I want to talk to you today about a performance problem that showed up on our forum uh, and if you get the same problem how to resolve it. Um, it also shows a little bit of how we do uh, debugging in Sidechart in order to uh, diagnose performance problems so if you have any issues with performance you can always come to us uh, and give us some code to reproduce and we'll take a look. Uh, so Fleming had reported on uh, the forum that there was a performance issue when there were lots of not a numbers in a data series. Uh, not a number is used to show gaps in the series and we provided him with a possible solution but he said no it doesn't work. Uh, so Fleming gave us a, down here, he gave us a basically some code to reproduce and he said that if he has 50% of the values in his series not a number then the UI gets very unresponsive but if it's lower say 5% uh, or 95% then the UI is uh, acceptable. So we took a look at his solution and uh, basically we were able to reproduce. So give me a moment, I'm going to pause the video and get this running. Uh, actually I need to show you this because his sample doesn't compile off the bat so I need to remove uh, these and then I'm going to go into NuGet and browse and using NuGet.org I'm going to search for SciChart and install SciChart. and also sidechart.directx. And in the app config, sorry, app XAML, uh, you need to remove this code here. Uh, in the line chart example view, uh, remove this code and this, and you can get rid of that. Now hopefully, I'll just delete it. Hopefully that's gonna work, let's, let's try. Not quite. So we always ask uh, customers to give us uh, solutions and code to reproduce and very often when we get them they don't compile so you know it's always helpful if they do but we know what we're doing uh, but if you guys download the same thing uh, then you'll see um, you'll have to make those changes to get it to work. Okay so if you run the app you'll notice that when you resize so I've just resized that it's extremely slow yeah, the performance is pretty poor. And looking in the code, you'll see that there are four series, stroke thickness set to two, resampling precision set to three. Uh, he's setting the high quality renderer, the extreme resampler on. So these are like little parameters that you can use to tweak the settings in SciChart. All of these are in our documentation um, if you look them up. There's a million points and uh, not a number percent is set to 0 0.5. So there's a 50% chance that a point will be um, not a number. Um, and these are added into the chart. Now, the way the side chart works with not a number is as follows. When there is a not a number in the chart, uh, basically we interpret that as a gap, okay? So if you have a search for side chart gaps in series, there we go, it's already in my search history then we have an example that shows you how to put gaps in a series and you can also have closed lines when there's a gap as well uh, when there's a not a number and basically when you use not a number in a series y value you can you can put a gap however internally in order to do this what we're doing is we're iterating over all the points and if a not a number exists then we're basically terminating the line segment here and then we're restarting the line segment here now in Fleming's case what was happening was that there were not a numbers 50 percent of the time so if you imagine that the chart might look something like this, where basically you've got a, a point and a point and a point, and then you've got a gap and then you've got a point, then what happens is we're drawing a line segment like so, okay? So far so good. However, if you have a point and then a gap and then a point and then a gap and then a point and then a gap, what happens is we've got nothing to draw a line segment to. So every time we encounter one of these, we encounter a point on its own we're basically creating a dummy line segment at that location, which is sort of one pixel length. And every time we do this, we're, we're double inserting points. So he has one million points in his uh, data series. Yeah, but 50% are not a number. So he ends up with approximately 500,000 line segments. So even with resampling built into SciChart, where we reduce the number of data points to the minimum required on screen, we end up with something like 500,000 line segments, which is why this is slow. So we looked at this, we tried all manner of things in order to improve the performance. We tried setting direct X, we tried uh, tweaking these settings, etc., etc. 
we got absolutely nowhere. So what we did in the end was we ended up using a different approach, and this was the palette provider. So I'm going to code this now. The video will speed up a little bit, and you'll see uh, what I did. Okay, so I think we're about done. So the changes that I've made are as follows. So what I did was I removed the not a numbers from the data series itself, and I created a point metadata, which I've called a null point metadata with this flag called is null. Then I created a null point palette provider, which implements I stroke palette provider. Um, just for reference sake, the point metadata feature and the stroke palette provider are both listed in our documentation if you wanna have a look. Uh, the palette provider, when the series begins drawing, we get the stroke, and that's the default color. Uh, and then when this method is called override stroke color, what we're doing is we're checking if the renderable series data series metadata at the index has the is null flag return transparent, otherwise return the default color. Uh, finally, over here, uh, we've commented out uh, this line setting the high quality renderer as that's the slowest renderer, and we've enabled the DirectX renderer instead, which is the fastest. Uh, we've, we've left this uh, extreme resampler, although this, uh, this is an experimental feature, it's not strictly necessary um, in this case, but we've left it there. And finally, we're simply adding the null point, uh, null point metadata with the do not a number flag uh, there. And if you look at the function sign uh, signature here, we've got uh, the x values, the y values, and the metadata values, which can be added to uh, the data series. Uh, finally, we remove the resampling precision um, flag, which basically increases the number of points exponentially, uh, and uh, we've left stroke thickness too. So let's run it and see what happens. Fingers crossed. Okay, there we go. We can see the performance is great on the resize, but um, there's no gaps in our series, and that's because uh, I've made a mistake and I've not actually set the palette provider. So let's do this. So sidechart.renderable series for each do, and we're going to set the palette provider is equal to a new null point palette provider. Fantastic. There we go. No, still not there. Um, okay, well. <laughs> As we can see, it's never easy doing this sort of stuff. So give me a second and I'll find the issue. There we go, a little bit of debugging uh, while the video was paused. Uh, basically, I recall that if you set this flag, the extreme resampler, you really ought to be setting this flag as well, uh, which is a drawing manager that goes with it. As I said, these are experimental, um, but they do quite a good job at resampling and providing more accurate uh, results, uh, but, but also uh, while keeping speed the same. So here we go, here's the result. So we've got our series, we've got our gaps provided by the uh, not a number, but in this case, we're using the palette provider and the resizing is uh, pretty much instantaneous, uh, as you can see. Uh, the performance is much, much improved. Uh, we still have a million points here, um, but this time we're resampling and drawing this as one complete line segment, um, but uh, instead with uh, uh, um, transparent used uh, to render the null points. So this is an example of how you can, uh, with the right knowledge, you can basically go from a application that's completely unusable to one that is performant uh, using SciChart. If you have an issue with performance uh, and you are in tech support, you have a support subscription, uh, then contact us and send it over to our support desk and we will be very glad to help.